In this video, we're going to learn how to write a C program to find the frequency of each letter in a string. So the first thing we'll do is make an example string. Car star S is equal to the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So this is actually a famous phrase because it contains every letter in the alphabet. So this makes for a good test string. Now what we're going to try to do is count the occurrences of each letter in the string. There are 26 letters in the alphabet and our program is going to be case insensitive. So we'll count this uppercase T as an occurrence of T and we'll also count this lowercase T as an occurrence of T. So what we'll do is declare an interray called letter counts and it's going to be 26 ints in length. So we can store 26 separate counts, one for each letter. We initially want the count of each letter to be zero. So what we'll do is initialize all the elements in this array to zero with equals open bracket zero close bracket. And this here is going to initialize all the elements, all the counts to zero. So next what we'll do is include a couple libraries to help us out. We're going to want to find the length of the string that we're trying to count the letters in. To help us do that, we can use the string library's strlen function. So we're going to include string.h. We're also going to include the ctype library. So the ctype library has a function called toLower. And the toLower function is going to help us to handle uppercase letters by turning them into lowercase letters. So we're going to solve this problem by writing a loop with a counter variable that's going to start off at the index of the first character in the string, and we're going to increment it by one with each iteration of the loop until it reaches the length of the string. For each character, we're first going to determine if that character is a letter or not, because characters like these are letters, but we have a space character here, and we have an exclamation mark here, and those characters are not letters. Once we've determined that the character is a letter, we're going to increment the relevant letter count in this array. So in this array, the first element of the array is going to store the count for A. The second element of the array is going to store the count for B, and so on, until we get to the last element of the array, which is going to store the count for Z. So the first thing we'll do to help us make this loop is get the length of the string. We'll have int length is equal to strlens. So the strlen function is going to return the length of this string here. And we're going to store that into this int length variable. It's going to be the length of the string, not including the special null terminator character that terminates the string. We'll also declare a variable car c. So c is going to store each character in the string after we've applied the to lower function to that character. Next, we'll make the loop. So we'll have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than the length of the string, i plus plus. So i is going to be our counter variable that's gonna go from zero up until the length of the string. So with each iteration of this loop, i is going to be set to the index of the next character in the string. So we can look at it and determine if it's a letter, and if so, count it. So the next thing we'll do is write the loop body. The first thing we'll do in the loop body is apply the to lower function to the character that we're currently looking at. So we'll have C is equal to to lower. And we're going to pass the to lower function, the character at the index I in our string S. So if the to lower function is passed an uppercase letter, like this uppercase T, it's going to return the lowercase version of that letter. So in this case, it would return lowercase T and we would store that into C. If the to lower function is passed a lowercase letter or a character that's not a letter at all, it's going to just return that same character. So at this point, if C does contain a letter, we know that it's the lowercase version of that letter. Now at this point, one simple way that we could keep a count of the occurrences of each letter in the string is to check to see if C is A, if C is B, if C is C, and so on. So we could have if C is equal to the character lowercase a increment letter counts at index zero by one. Else if C is equal to lowercase b increment letter counts at index one by one. 
else if c is equal to lowercase c, increment letter counts at index two by one, and so on, all the way up to z. The problem with this approach is it's a very inelegant way to solve this problem. There's a much simpler and cleaner way to solve this problem if we understand how characters are stored in C. So in C, every character is represented with some integer value. So here we have 97, and 97 represents the character lowercase a. B is represented with 98. C is represented with 99, all the way to Z, where lowercase z is represented with 122. And we can actually use characters like z and a as int values because ultimately z is just 122. So for example, we could write code like this. If the character c is greater than or equal to a and c is less than or equal to z, this is actually going to translate to 97 and 122. And what we're doing is checking to see if the character is in this range of A to Z. So we can use this to simplify our code. We don't have to do 26 checks. We can do just one check to determine if the character actually is a letter. We can also do things like this. If I had, let's say, the character Z, and I did minus the character A, this would actually be 122 minus 97, which would give us 25. We could actually use this to determine the index of the letter counts array that needs to be incremented. So if we had A as our character, and we subtracted A, we would then have 97 minus 97, which would give us zero. If we had B as our character and we subtracted A, this would be 98 minus 97, which would give us one. And again, if we had C as our character and we subtracted A, this would give us 99 minus 97, which gives us two. These are the exact indexes in our letter counts array that we want to increment for each one of these characters. So if the next character that we're looking at in the loop is A, we want to increment index zero of our letter counts array. If the next character that we're looking at in the loop is B, then we want to increment index one of our letter counts array, and so on, all the way to Z, when we want to increment index 25 of the letter counts array. So let's use these two tools to help us solve this problem. Up here, we'll do a simple range check now. We'll have if C is greater than or equal to A and C is less than or equal to Z. So if this condition is true, this means the character is in the range A to Z. Then we can increment the correct index of the letter counts array with letter counts C minus the character A plus plus. So this here is using the exact technique we just talked about, where if C is set to A, this is going to give us zero. If C is set to B, this is going to give us one and so on. And we're going to take that index and we're going to increment the element at that index by one to increment the count of occurrences of that letter. So by the end of this loop, letter counts is going to contain the count of each letter in this string. Now we could just output letter counts very simply, just to check. We could have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than 26, i plus plus. And then here we could do a simple printout of the values in letter counts. So we could have printf percent d backslash n letter counts at index i. We could save this, compile it, and run it and we should get the count of all the letters in our string here, and we do. But right now, this isn't a very nice output of the data. For data like this, it would be nice if we could put it in a nice looking table. So that way we could have each letter and the count of that letter beside it. So let's do that. 
let's put this data in a nice looking table. We'll actually make some table headers. We'll have printf and we'll have percent minus 10 s percent minus 10 s and percent minus 10 s. So percent minus 10 s means that we're going to output a string here. 10 is the field width and minus is going to left align the string within that field. Here we're going to have our three column headings. We'll have letter. This column is going to contain the actual letter itself. Then we'll have count where the count column will contain the count of each letter. We'll also have one more column percent where the percent column is going to contain the percent of the entire string made up of this letter. So we'll also have a new line to end our headings. So we can save, compile and run this. And right now we'll see that we have three column headings, letter, count and percent. And all of them are in fields of width 10 and they're all left aligned within their field. Next, let's actually output a row of stars to separate our headings from our actual data. So we'll have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than 30, i plus plus. So this loop is gonna iterate 30 times. And all we're gonna do is print out a star character each time to give us a row of 30 stars. And then we'll finish this line by outputting a new line character. Next, we can actually output our columns of data so here in this loop right now, we're already outputting the letter count for each letter. So what we'll also do is output the letter itself and the percent. So we're gonna change this to percent minus 10 C, percent minus 10 D, and percent minus 10 dot two F. So to output each row of data in our table, we have three left aligned fields of width 10. That's going to match our column headings. That way we get a neatly organized table where each column in our table has a fixed width. In our first column, we're going to output the actual letter itself. That's why we have C here to output a character. In the second column, we're going to output the number of occurrences of that character in the string. That's going to be an int value. So that's why we have D here. Then, in our third column, we have F here to output a double. And we have dot two here so that we can output that double with two decimal digits of precision. And that double value is going to be the percent of the string that's made up of that letter. So to output the actual letter itself here, we're going to have A plus I. So I is being incremented from zero up until 25 because it's gonna stop when i is 26. We're going to take a, which is really 97, and we're going to add i to that. Then we're gonna output that resulting integer as a character. So when i is zero, we're gonna output a. When i is one, we're going to output b. When i is two, we're going to output c, and so on. Then next, we're gonna output the actual letter count for that letter. Now to determine the percentage, we're gonna to have to do a calculation. So we'll create a variable called percent to actually store the percent. Then here in the loop, we'll calculate the percent for each character. So we'll have percent is equal to double letter underscore counts at the index i divided by length multiplied by 100. So we declared the variable percent as a double type variable. So that way we can store numbers with a decimal place. So here, letter counts is an int value. So we convert it to a double. We do that because we want this division operation to do double division, such that our number will have a decimal place to it instead of integer division, which doesn't give us any decimal place values. If we had left letter counts as an int value, this would actually do integer division. So that's why we have this conversion here to ensure that the number we get as a result does contain the decimal place values. So this will give us the percent of characters in the string that are made up of this letter.
because we're taking this count of that letter and dividing it by the total number of characters in the string. Then we're multiplying the result by 100. So that way we get a nice percentage figure that we can output here. So the next thing we'll have to do is add percent as an argument to the printf here. So we'll just have comma and then percent. So if we save, compile, and run our program, we now get this nice table output here that has column headings, a separation between our column headings and the data. And we can see that the letter A is in our string once, and that makes up 2.27% of the entire string. Whereas E is in the string three times, and that makes up 6.82% of the total characters in the string. So that's how we can count the occurrences of each letter in a string using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.